Brooklyn Independent Television. My goals as a teacher are um, basically to just introduce people to the music. I try to place a lot of emphasis on style and appreciation of the music. A lot of people that come to me for lessons do so out of some sort of inner need that is abstract. <laughs> they don't know why they wanted to learn the banjo and they, they, don't, they haven't even heard much banjo music. So I try to, to feed them. I, I, I try to get them listening to the music because the best way to learn to play music is to have it in your head and to, and to love it. The Jalopy Theater is a wonderful um, small theater and school of music down on Columbia Street on the border of Carroll Gardens and Red Hook off the uh, Carroll stop on the F. It's a really, really great um, space for, for uh, folk music. It's where I hang out. I also work there. Um, I, teach, I teach the banjo classes there. And it's run by uh, Jeff and Lynette Wiley, um, a, a uh, really amazing uh, couple. They, they, they built the place with their bare hands. We're a music school for adults mostly. We're doing more programming for children. We're an instrument repair shop, and we're also a stage for traditional roots music from around the world. We came here with the idea of trying to preserve the folk music traditions that were out there, and also to showcase the young people that are trying to explore and perfect their versions of this music. I play in uh, an old-time string band called the Dust Busters. I, I play uh, the banjo and the guitar and the mandolin and um, the harmonica and the Jew's harp and the old-fashioned pump organ. As a band, we, I guess we just, you know, we want to practice and, and make it sound old-timey like it should. Old time music, you know, it's just old American music that's been around for a long time. There still are people in the South that play, that have played it and learned it from their family. But increasingly we have to learn from records and so we get these, these records that are little glimpses of what people were doing in the 20s and 30s and uh, we try and piece that together with uh, what we find from people that are around today and playing and figure out our own style of playing it. Back in the 1960s era, you could go into the South and meet the people that had recorded in the 1920s. The, the, uh, it was a, a time when giants walked the earth. You know, the, 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 um, the real deal, you could hear the real deal. You know, you could go down there, you could go to their house. Um, it's not like that anymore. Standing on a corner, smoking a cheap cigar, waiting for a free drink to catch an empty car. You get on Tinder, and I will ride them blind. We'll go back to Georgia, wanna see what hair New York's a tough place. It always has been, and it's probably more, even tougher now than, than, it, than it has been in the past. One time I, I was uh, watching a very elderly blues musician named uh, Honey Boy Edwards be interviewed, and he was talking about how back in the day in um, Memphis or in Mississippi in the 30s or 40s, he was like, I, he said, I had, I, had, uh, I had two different hustles. I could play guitar um, and, and I could um, cheat at cards. I actually have four or five hustles. Um, so I, I play banjo in, in the band and the Dust Busters and, and we tour around. I do my internet radio show, Down Home Radio, and um, that's great and you can get a little money out of that. Um, I, I teach music teach banjo lessons, and I founded the Brooklyn Folk Festival in uh, 2009. And between all those things, I can um, get by. The Brooklyn Folk Festival is in its third year. This year we're going to do one show here, the rest down at the Brooklyn Waterfronts Arts Council. It's the largest gathering of Brooklyn and Manhattan-based folk musicians in the history of Brooklyn, as far as we can tell. 
There's a full-scale uh, folk music revival going on today, whether it will achieve the same level of popularity as in the 1960s era remains to be seen. But as my old friend, uh, the folklorist Henrietta Yurchenko once said, uh, in times of turmoil, uh, economic uh, recession and depression, war, um, folk music revivals happen. Went to the doctor, the doctor looked sad. Looked in his book and he told me what I had. All kinds of trouble. Find you somehow. In any case, uh, I'm from New York City, you know, I'm, I'm not from any sort of an agricultural background. Uh, a boll weevil has never eaten my cotton crop, you know what I mean? I, I, I wasn't on the Titanic when it went down. Um, but in any case, and I'm glad about that, I never had to, had to dig out coal, and, I, and that's great because <laughs> it's horrible. You know, those, those, are, those are horrible things to have to do. Um, but I, I feel as though I, I can identify with those people um, through their music, and I, I'm proud to be bringing their music to uh, new generations of people and new audiences. So I just try to respect it and, and, uh, and, and respect those people. And it's all kinds of trouble Gonna find you somehow If I live to be Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.